Hi, I'm Steve. This is How To In 500 Reviews. And today, we're going to test the Honda NC750 and see if it really is as good as people say on fuel economy. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're a return viewer, welcome back. And not so long ago, I did a review on the Honda NC750. And that review was a very successful review. A lot of people have watched that review. And one of the questions that I keep getting asked is, is the bike as good as I said it was on fuel economy? Over the seven days that I tested this, and I rode it every day, I rode it in the dirt on the trail. Well, we've seen all that, haven't we? Um, and I rode it fairly hard at some points. I averaged 3.3 litres per 100 kilometres. So today we're going to run it through a regular daytime run. So that'll be a run from home, down to the city, to work, in and around town, and then back up, refuel, we'll do the calcs and see if it really is as good as people say. Okay, so the tank is full, let's zero those kilometres. We had 314 out of the last tank, but that was only uh, partially empty. Okay, litres, average per 100 k's, that's now zeroed, and the kilometres are set. Let's head off and do a little bit of riding. So as we head off on our economy test on this beautiful day, it is just a spectacular day to be riding a motorbike. One of the questions I get asked is, where are you? Well, I'm in Australia. You can see it there on the world map and I'm located in South Australia. Australia is a big island. We don't border any other countries. I'm just outside of the capital city of Adelaide, which is the capital of South Australia. And I'm up in the Adelaide Hills Ranges uh, a little place called Harndorf, and Harndorf is a actually originally a German settled town back in the 1830s, but Harndorf, the actual name Hahn, comes from the Danish captain that sailed the ship over with the, um, the German migrants on it back in the 1830s, I think it was the late 1830s. A lovely part of the world. We're 1,300 feet or about 400 metres above sea level, so generally it is a, a cooler type climate where I am here, but in saying that today, I started off in six degrees Celsius, so quite cool. I think that would be around that 40 odd Fahrenheit mark, and we're expecting a top of 40 degrees, so a little over 100 Fahrenheit. And that's very good to do a, a fuel economy test. And the reason I say that is you're starting in cool, moist air, and as the day goes on, the air is going to get thinner, and hotter so a good cross section of riding i'm on what you would call now i've got to get this right when i get this wrong my uk viewers give me a hard time i'm on what i would call an a road hopefully i got that right uh, we just call it a country road here in oz but um, on an a road up in the adelaide hills region as i head off down towards the city we're roughly i suppose 20 odd kilometers from the city this road is a 60 mile an hour road or 100 kilometers per hour. So it's a good up and down through the gears, round the bends. The NC is beautiful to ride through this type of terrain. It's a longer bike as in the wheelbase. So it takes a little while to get used to tipping it into the corners compared to a, a shorter machine. But it is just lovely with the torque the motor has. Um, you don't need to be screaming it the whole time to ride through here. And this road will take me through, where will this end up? Oh, okay, I'll take this road through and we'll end up at the actual freeway where we're going to get onto the main freeway that'll head down into Adelaide City. So we're going to get some hills riding, we're going to get some city riding, we're going to get some freeway riding. So as it gives you, as I think I might've said, a good cross section of fuel burn to give you a good average. As I pull up here, you can see we've got a goods train coming, uh, or goods train, cargo train, whatever you like to call it. I'm not a train spotter by any means, but they do fascinate me. This train is heading off down to Adelaide and they must have so much horsepower. This train went on for several minutes. I've backed out of that position where I was at the gates and I've come over here onto the rocks and gravel 
and this type of terrain doesn't bother the NC at all. Um, in fact, it's quite a good little mild or soft off-road bike. I've had this on some trails, I've had it on dirt roads, um, but there you go, look at this train, still going. I guess it's doing, I don't know, 30, 40 mile an hour and it just went on and on and on. But, you know, I've been on the road for a couple of hours now, so uh, look, there's some important things that I probably need to do. Yep, all right, love, no, I'm working. I'll give you a tingle later. Bye. I don't know, some people just don't realize how hard this video making is. Ah, so half an hour later or one cappuccino later, we'll head out onto the freeway, motorway, um, highway, whatever it is you call it in your part of the world. And this is 110 kilometer an hour zone, which is about that 70 mile an hour, which I think it's about 69 mile an hour or something for the 110. You know, I think one of the big benefits of this bike and uh, in answer to your question, yes, it's more than capable of freeway travel, highway travel. It is smooth, it is quiet. Oh, this one's a little bit louder, of course, because it's got the, um, the aftermarket breathy exhaust on it, but it's more than capable of traveling on the highway. And it's the low revving nature of this motor. Um, it's an under square motor. So what does that mean? The cylinder diameter is less than the stroke. So the amount that the piston goes up and down. So it's a very low revving motor. It's good on torque, maybe not as high on horsepower because it's not screaming, but um, it's a lovely torquey machine and you don't need to rev it high. As an example, and you can compare it with your current motorcycle that you may have at 2,900 RPM in top gear. It has a six speed gearbox. It's doing just on 100 kilometers an hour or around that 60 mile an hour mark. And when I had it out on the track at 160 kilometers an hour, that's a 100 mile an hour, it's doing 5,000 RPM. And to put that into perspective, um, at 100 mile an hour or 160, 5,000, the Royal Enfield Himalayan that I did the review on recently at 5,000 RPM was doing 100 kilometers an hour or 60 mile per hour. So this is a very low revving, although it is a twin, not to forget the Himalayan was a single, but um, it is a very low revving motor. And I think that is where it picks up its, its wonderful fuel economy. As I came through here in the tunnels, I actually pulled the clutch in and gave it a good rev so you could hear how beautiful this Honda twin sounds. But um, the microphone had a dummy spit and it didn't record it, so you'll just have to take my word for it. It sounds lovely. So we've worked our way now down out of the hills and we're into the city. Um, as a city bike, what's it like? Look, it's very practical. It's easy to ride. Um, as I said prior, we don't need to rev it because it's such a, a talky little bike. Um, it pulls in and around through town. You can get away from the lights nice and quick if you've filtered down. And because it's not overly wide in the bars, you can filter down through the traffic without any problems at all. Um, the braking is excellent. The seating position, you're in an upright type seating position, so you're not head down, bum up type scenario where you're, you're bending your neck back all the time. And before I get picked on, and I know I will in the comments, um, from people saying, you haven't got your helmet done up. I actually, I have got it done up. It's just that I haven't pulled or, or clipped the little strap up. I've taken a close up of it here, look, just to prove it so I don't get in trouble. Normally you would click that little red clicker back up and it just stops it flapping around. Um, but yeah, look, in town, it is as good as any other machine that I've ever ridden in town. Um, or maybe a scooter would be a little more maneuverable in the sense that it's narrower for filtering down through the traffic, but this handles it without any worries at all. If you haven't seen the used bike review, 
I did on the NC750. Now that's on the manual version. They do this bike in DCT or the auto version as well. Um, it was this bike that I did the review on. Oh, there's a Harley in there. It's a strange place to park, isn't it? I guess it's out of the weather, out of the sun. Um, yeah, have a look on my channel. Just go to How To In 5 and Reviews. Click on Videos. You can scroll down and you'll see the NC... Uh, what do I call it? NC750X used bike review. And that will give you a whole lot more detail on just how practical this bike is with its, its under tank or under lid storage. Because, of course, the fuel tank on this bike is under the rear seat unlike most where it's up sitting on top um, so the top section that would normally be a, a fuel tank uh, on a lot of bikes is a storage section in here which is great it is fantastic um, you, you don't have to although i did have the top box on when i did this because i had all my camera gear in it um, oh there's an ionic 5 one of the new electric cars i haven't seen a lot of those on the road here in um, in south australia before I guess they're starting to, electric cars are coming from everywhere, aren't they? I wonder how long until we're riding around on electric motorbikes. I think range would probably be the issue there. But look, I've been going for a while now. And, um, you know, this is, as I mentioned before, this is hard work. So I guess it's time to reverse into here. Um, this is Guja Street in the city, in Adelaide City. And it's one of my favorite eatery streets. There's every type of restaurant that you could possibly want here. And uh, there is a motorbike park right next to my favorite Malaysian restaurant. Well, time to recoup some energy with a nice chicken laksa and then back on the road. Oh, okay. Well, back on the road again. And uh, it's starting to get up around that 40 degree mark here in the city. It's starting to get quite warm. So in Adelaide, as with a lot of the capital cities around Australia um, that are located very close to the coast, you can hop on the bike, zap down. It's only about 15 minutes and you're down at the beach. So that's what we'll do. Down at the beach now, this is about, I guess, 15 minutes later. We'll find a park here for the bike and zap in and have a quick swim. The water looks nice. Quite busy down here today. I guess uh, 40 degree days or 100 degree days will do that. But um, we'll find a park, zap in, have a quick swim and then back to it. Well, that's better. Back on the bike. Probably time we went in back into the city now and refueled. Oh. Hang on a minute. Uh, that looks like, oh, it's gotta be afternoon tea time by now, doesn't it? Yeah, I think I should stop and have my afternoon cup of coffee. Now I know what you're thinking. Gee, he works hard, but look, that's okay. I don't mind taking one for the team. Somebody has to do it. Well, we're getting to the end of the day. We're over 300 kilometers now on this tank. Time to pop into the service station or the gas station or the fuel station, whatever you call it, and fill her up. So we put the key in, turn it anti-clockwise. Seat lifts up and to the tank. So this will be interesting. We've just, uh, where are we at? We're at about 300 and 314 kilometers. And there you go there. Hopefully you can read that with the, uh, the reflection. It's 312.8 kilometers. So it'll be interesting to see how much it takes. The low fuel warning hadn't come on yet. Where is it? Down there, hello. Uh, low fuel warning hadn't come on yet. And it only holds 14 liters of fuel. The reading on the dash, it's averaged between 3.2 and 3.4 litres per 100 k's. And that's it. Any more? And she's going to be running over. So I'm not sure if you can read that or not. 
9.91 litres, so just under 10 litres of fuel. That was $18.82 at $1.89.9 a litre. So uh, yeah, we'll crunch some numbers. So what was the final wash? Well, no matter where you are in the world, you're probably sick of putting your hand in your pocket. It's the reason you're watching this video. It's certainly not for my good looks. Fuel is expensive and the NC is a very economical bike. So what are the final numbers? Here we go. As the instrument panel showed, it was just shy of 3.3 litres per 100 kilometres. That's 74.5 miles to the gallon US or in Oz and the UK, 89.5 miles to the gallon. Or if you like it in kilometres to the litre, that's 31.5 kilometres to the litre. This is a super economical bike for a 750cc machine. And if you're in the market for an NC750 or whatever it is you may be in the market for, these really are a terrific, economical, super efficient bike to own. Look, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give us the thumbs up and subscribe. It helps the channel. And I know we had a bit of fun there with drinking coffee and eating and everything else, but a fair amount of effort went into putting this video together for you. So hopefully it helps if you're in the market for a good economical bike. But until next time, cheers.